the, the classical way of, of going through this topic is to say, okay, here's this um, very, very abstract skill which I'm going to teach you. It's completely algebraic. It, has, it seems completely divorced from reality. And it's very, very, um, uh, like everything is variables and, and pronouns, etc. And then later on, like weeks later, you discover it has this really cool application, right? Uh, to have to do with probability, mainly in our context, okay? So I'm going to kind of turn that upside down a little bit because I think it's kind of cool to know where you're going and why on earth this principle is useful, this method is useful, because um, rather than saying, hey, you know, shh, you'll find out later, there's no reason why you can't find out now, okay? As opposed to, as I explained yesterday, um, this thing, it's like, well, you know, actually, there's a really good reason we don't tell you that from the get-go when we want you to know the area of a circle because there's lots of things you need to know, like huge numbers of things you need to know in order to be able to get from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. But what we need to understand why this is useful, you can understand right now. So uh, what is this thing? What kind of diagram is this called? This is called a, uh, a tree diagram, right? I'm about to make it a probability tree diagram by labeling each of the branches. Because what we're looking at here is uh, the probability of some sort of event, right? And then does anyone remember what that squiggly line means? The uh, inverse? Yeah, so there's a variety of words that are used for this. The most common one is complement. So in the context of probability, what that means is, you know, it's either, you know, uh, you roll a six, when you roll the die, or you roll some other number that's not a six. And those are the only options. Six, not six, okay? Or sunny, not sunny. As opposed to say, for instance, sunny and raining are not complements, right? Like they tend not to happen together, but they can. And there are also other things that are neither sunny nor raining, like say, overcast, right? So what we mean here, um, E, the complement of E. So these are opposite events. Now, let's actually go with um, the, the six not six idea, just as an example, okay? If I said this, um, what E was, is um, rolling a six. Roll a six on a standard fair side, okay? And so this is roll one, two, three, four, or five, okay? What would the probabilities on my branches actually be? A sixth. A sixth? And five sixths, yeah? yeah. Good morning. Uh, I'm gonna put this in another color, actually. A sixth and five sixths. Okay, now you can see in this particular probability tree diagram, what I'm imagining is that I roll my die and then I roll a die again, right? And so that's what this second set of branches is all about, okay? But because of the nature of dice, like these are independent events, right? So you roll one and then you roll the second one and they don't affect each other, okay? So when I have a look at the probabilities on these sets of branches, they end up being exactly the same, right? They don't change, unlike say, oh, I don't know, you know, taking marbles out of a bag and it's like, well, once I take them out, that changes, you know, based on what I pulled out the first time, what I pulled out the second time will be different, okay? So these are the kinds of things that are happening here. Now, where would we normally go is say, okay, well, let's work out, and I'll stay with red, let's work out what the total probability of any of these events is. And you multiply along the branches if you want to work out what happens if you roll a six and then roll a six again, okay? Now, for the sake of illustration, and try and connect us to this concept properly, right? I'm not actually going to evaluate. I'm just going to write, like, what are these probabilities, okay? So in the first case, you're getting a six times a six. And we all know what that is, but I'm just going to write it in this form because it's actually more helpful to me. Um, in here, right, roll a six, then don't roll a six. The probability will be a six times five six, right? Third event. 5, 6 times 1, 6, and then lastly, this is 5, 6 squared. Okay, now if I were then to flip around the question a little bit and say, okay, let's take this list of probabilities, and now what I'm interested in is, what's the probability of getting two sixes, or one six, or zero sixes, no sixes, okay? What are each of those going to add up to? This is a fairly simple example, so the numbers will end up simple. Over here, right, there is only one way, there's only one way to get this probability, okay, of having two sixes. So if I say probability of two, I'll write the number, sixes, okay, there's only a single way to do that, and you're going to get one out of 36. I'm just going to pause on that one for a second. If I want to have the probability of just one six, there are actually two ways to get that. Right? So when I work out what this number is, I have to include both of these ways. Does that make sense? 
Uh, and then lastly, the probability of getting zero sixes, this guy here. Again, there's only a single way of doing this, okay? Now, I wonder if you can see how this connects to our binomial coefficients, okay? You've got two sets of things that are happening, right? This times this, right? So there is a function that's being squared. And then you've got one way, you've got two ways, you've got one way. Are the numbers starting to become familiar? This is actually 2 true 0 times the 6th squared, right? Does that make sense? 2 true 0, there's one way of doing this, okay? Whereas for here, 2 choose 1, there's one 6 in there. So there's, I'm from two different options, I'm choosing only one times this number here. Right, you can see I can have it in either order. Does that make sense? And then lastly here, what you've really got is 2 choose 2 times 5, 6 squared. Okay? So if I were to change these from a 6 and 5, 6 to be more general, and just to say, like, let's just call this A and B, right? A and B. Then what you're getting over here is the familiar binomial coefficients that you've seen before, right? This is going to be 2 choose 0 A squared. This will be 2 choose 1 A B. And this will be 2 choose 2 B squared. Right? Which, of course, once you combine all of these things together, gives you the sum of all of the terms in your binomial expansion. Right? Um, 2 choose 1, of course, is just 1, plus that is 2, and this is 1. Okay? So you can see this is where the binomial expansion comes from. I could have done any higher power I liked, I just wanted to make the diagram small enough for you to draw. Okay? So the idea now here is, finding the greatest coefficient, right? which one of these is going to end up the largest? What it is is really a mechanism to find out, in our context, well, what's the most likely event? What is the most likely event to occur? Because it will correspond to the highest probability, the greatest number, okay? Now, in an example like the one I chose, it's kind of trivial to work out what that is, okay? Because obviously that's the most common thing. But if I were to change A and B, so they were a little more like closer together, and if I had more events coming out, right? So for example, suppose I rolled, you know, a hundred dice, a hundred dice, right? And then I was not asking, okay, you know, is it going to be more likely that I have a hundred sixes or, you know, a hundred not sixes? That's really, really easy. What if I was just interested in numbers two and three? There's lots and lots of different ways to get just a 2 and a 3. There's going to be lots of these guys in the middle that will add up. So which one is the most, what's the most common number of 2s and 3s to get? I don't know. It's a non-trivial question. It actually takes some work, okay? So that's what this kind of, this, which I'm going to demonstrate to you now in all theory and abstract terms, that's where, that's where this is going, okay? It's trying to solve a probability problem. 